so guys as you can see we have two buttons here one is this this is for the right direction this one is for the left direction when i will press the right button it will move in the right direction for four rounds and then it will stop now again it is waiting for the button to be pressed i press the left button now it will go in the left direction for four rounds see this is how you can control the stepper motor using buttons using this tutorial so see hello guys welcome to learning microcontrollers in this video i'm going to show you how you can interface a nema stepper motor using a4988 stepper driver module with a pic 16 fe 7 m microcontroller and then we are going to use push buttons to control its direction of motion so let's get started so guys this is our pic 16 fe 7 a microcontroller having 40 pins it's a dip version and this is the a4988 stepper driver module as you can see it has a potential meter at the bottom here this is a current limiting potential meter if you want to change the rating of the current you simply rotate it using a screwdriver then guys this is our stepper motor i'm using nema 17 you can use 13 as well or any other which you have available at your place so guys as you can see if we hold the stepper motor like this with a connector at the left side then there are total six pins here and uh, you can see that out of these six wires only four are connected so only four will be used by the motor and they are labeled here as well so let me show you how to label it so the topmost pin is a 2b then leave it blank second one is blank third one is 2a then 1a then blank and then again 1b now guys these are six pins four connected two to be remained blank now guys this is a external power source you can use an adapter dc power adapter or some sort of battery or some sort of power supply whatever you have available in your project to provide the dc voltage and this voltage is specifically only for the motor you will not connect this motor this source to the pick pick and this ic will have a separate source because they are low voltage devices so this will be for the motor only and then guys let me label this a, a, a stepper driver module for you as you can see that on the right side the topmost pin is the v-mode that is the voltage for motor this pin will go here then we have a ground then we have 2b 2a 1a 1b that's why i labeled them 2b 2a 1a 1b so you can connect them directly now now you know where they must be connected to and then we have vdd and then we have ground like this now this is the right side and then on the left top we have enable pin we have ms1 ms2 ms3 these are the micro selection pins by default if all the three pins are low and when they are low it means that your motor is in the full step mode and if you want to uh, lower down the step then you have to follow a table in the data sheet uh, but for our application we will leave them floating if they are floating it means that your motor is in the full step mode then we have reset then we have sleep then we have step and then we have direction now this enable pin is by default low and whenever it's low it means the driver is active if you want to deactivate the driver then you have to put the enable pin high so in our case we will leave it floating because we want the driver to be active now guys you will connect the v mode pin directly to the positive power supply positive of the power supply dc power source which will be used to drive the motor negative will go to the ground this ground and this ground are shorted from beneath so you don't have to short them from above now guys 2b to the 2b of the stepper motor 2a to the 2a 1a to the 1a 1b to the 1e then vdd and ground at the right bottom these are for your pick uh, for this IC. Uh, this IC works at maximum of 5 volt like your pick. So you will connect it to the picks VCC and ground to the picks ground like this. So for the motor you have external source. Now guys enable MS1, MS2, MS3 will go empty. And you will connect the reset with the sleeve, short them or use a jumper whatever you prefer. Then guys step and direction are the only two pins which will go to your microcontroller. For the step, I'm going to use a pin number D3 and for the direction, I'm going to use a pin number D2. You can use any available digital input output pin, whichever you, is available in your project. I'm going to use a pin number D3 and D2 like this. Now guys, there are our two buttons. One will be here, which will, when we will pr press one button, the motor will move in the clockwise direction or the right direction. The other button will make it go in the anti-clockwise direction. Now guys, as you can see, each button has two pins and button is not a polar component. We all know this. So for the top button, I label it like this, left pin as the VCC, right pin as the left. So you can shuffle these two pins, doesn't matter, it's a non-polar component. Now guys, for the bottom button, I label it like this, left pin VCC, right pin, right. Now guys, let's do the connections. 
connect the VCC pin of both the buttons together like this. Then you should send it to the common VCC of your PIC 16 fa 77 a like this. Now guys, for the top button, uh, for both the buttons, you will need a 10 kilo ohm resistor each for each button to connect with the PIC. Now we start with the top button. Connect the left pin to the one end of the 10 kilo ohm resistor like this. Then from the same pin, you will take out your output. You can use any available digital input output pin. I'm going to use a pin number C0. That is pin number 15 of the PIC. And then guys, from the other end of the 10 kilo ohm resistor, send it to the common ground like this. Now guys, for the bottom button, this is going to the ground, okay? And this is a ground. Now for this button, right button again, connect the right to the one end of the 10 kilo ohm resistor like this. Then from the same pin, take out your output. I'm going to use a pin number C1 for the right. And then from the other end of the 10 kilo ohm resistor, send it to the common ground like this. This is the ground here, okay? Now guys, in this way, our connections are completed. Let me introduce you to the hardware before we move on to the programming. So this is our hardware here. You can see that this is the stepper motor. This is the A498 motor driver. This is our PIC16 fa 7 a That over there is a PIC3.5. And this is the DC power source I'm going to use in this project. So let's get to the micro C4 PIC programming. So guys, this is our micro C4 PIC. Let me zoom in. So guys, as you can see, it's version 7.2.0 I'm going to use here. You can use the higher versions as well. So let's get started. So guys, this is new. Go to the new, new project, right? Uh, new project wizard will pop up. Click on next, write the name of the project. Stepper, motor, button, tutorial by learning microcontroller. So this is the name of the project I just wrote. This is the destination folder. This is the microcontroller I'm going to use. And the crystal I'm having is 20 megahertz. So click on next and finish. Now, guys, before you do anything else, first of all, press Control S to save your project like this. Then, guys, first of all, we have two, two pins. One is the direction pin and one is the step pin. So, so we first of all write down the direction pin. As shown in the presentation, our direction pin is F2, that is D dot F2 or port D, pin number D2 is direction. And our other pin, that is D3, is step pin. Now, you should remember this before you continue the programming. So, first of all, we declare these two pins as output pins. Write down trace D dot F2 equals to 0. Uh, like in case of Arduino, you write... Uh, uh, pin mode output. So in case of PIC, it's a trace register. Zero means output, one means input. So it's an output pair. Now initially, must be at zero. Port D dot F2 must be at zero like this. And give the initialization delay. Initialization delay is 20 and that's enough. Now go for the other pin, step pin. Now write down here. For the step pin, D dot F3, it's an also output pin, so it's output. So this is how these got initialized. Now for the button, write down trace C dot F0, we have button at C0 equals to 1. Now see the difference. Uh, in case of Arduino, you write pin mode input. Here you will use the trace register and 1 means it's an input. Like in case of direction step, it was output. So we use 0. So for the input, we are using 1. Initially, the button must be at... 0. Why? Because our 10 kilo ohm resistor is at the grounding end. This means that whenever the button will be pressed, a 1 will be sent. So, initially it must be at 0. Now, give some initialization delay. Not necessary, but I suggest you always give it in the one time loop. Now, you copy this, paste it here and make it for the button at C1 like this. Same. Now, this is for the right direction. C0 is right. This is the button which will move the motor to the right and this is for the left like this. Now we can go to the forever loop. We have our buttons initialized. We have our uh, direction and step pins initialized. So write down while one starting from here, the forever loop ending here. And inside it, write down. So first of all, what we do is that we need to know one thing that our motor is in the full step mode. So 200 steps me means one complete round. So, one complete round is 200 steps here. Now, we will use the forever loop. Oh, sorry. 
I will use a forever loop. Let me initialize a variable i for the forever loop. And initially the value of i is equal to 0, i equals to 0. So now what I do is that I write for i equals to 0 in the forever loop. What should happen is that i is less than 200. Like whenever the i will become 200, it will terminate the loop i plus plus. So it means this will be a one round. This loop will make a motor complete a one round. Then I write in it the pulse statements. That is the step. And above it, I will write the direction. Now for the direction, this is the pin d dot f2. So uh, we have direction as one. The motor will move to the right. And inside it, we give this one here step. Now this is the step here. And step is on. A pulse is just give a 1 and a 0. Now give some delay. This delay defines the speed. I give it 2000. Now I will turn it off to make the pulse complete. Now the pulse is on. Now the pulse will be off and it will be a pulse which the motor understands. So a pulse is sent and it will be repeated for 200 times to make the, the motor complete one complete round 360 degree. And its direction is 1. Now I go for the opposite, I make it like four, four rounds. So it will go four rounds uh, when this process will be uh, completed. Then uh, we will uh, make the motor stop to cool down. I give some 500 half a second delay. Now the motor will stop after moving uh, four rounds. So the, now let's build this code and burn it and see what happens. The code is built. I click on uh, Picket C programmer tool import. This is the file we just wrote. I click on write. Okay, the new code is being written. Let's wait. Okay, this is the hardware. It's just uh, stuttering because of a reason that we are writing the code and it is getting random pulses. See, it went four rounds, then stopped. See, total four rounds then stopped. As you can see, it is following our coding. See, it goes four rounds and then stops. Now we add a button. See, our code is working fine. Now we do our next thing that is to add a button. So let's go back. I go here and our button is at C dot F0. I write if port C dot F0 double equals to one. That is the right button is pressed. Then this whole loop will be followed. Now we also give the debouncing delay. In case the button is accidentally pressed, it will wait for 50 milliseconds. If still the button is pressed, only then it will enter this loop. So we give another ending bracket here. That's all. Now we build this code. Now we have a button here. Only this loop will be executed if the button is pressed, else it will not be executed. So we build the new code with the button added and see what happens. I click on write. Let's get to the hardware. The code is being written. It is just starting because it is programming and the supply is on. So programming is done. Let me power it up from the picket 3 programmer tool. So it's powered up. Now this is the button over here. Let me this. I press the button. See only then the motor starts. Then after four rounds it stops. See, this is perfect. That's what we wanted our button to do. See, it will complete four rounds and then stop only when the button is start. Now we also add the reverse sequence as well. So what we do is that we simply copy all of this, copy it, put the reverse, paste it below it like this. And we again, just add here else. Else if port C dot F1, the left button is at one, that is the opposite direction F1. And then direction will change. This is our direction. Make it zero. Zero means it will now go in the opposite direction. The rest of it will remain the same. Again, it will go for four rounds when the other button is pressed. Now we build this. Let me build the code. It's built. Let's write it. Click on write. The new code is being written. We get to the hardware. Just wait. It is just starting because it's programming and getting random pulses. So you should turn off the main power if you want. Okay, now both of our buttons are active. See, by default, the motor is not working. That's good. 
Now this is our right button and this is the left button. I press the right button. See, it goes for four rounds and then stops. Now I press the left button. See, it again goes for four rounds in the opposite direction and then stops. So guys, in this way, you can uh, use buttons with the stepper motor. You can play with the code. I will give you this code in the Google Drive link in the description of this video. If you have any questions, you can ask in the comments. So thank you very much for your time, guys, and have a nice day.